Hello friends, welcome back to innovations in marketing and marketing of innovations wherein we are focusing upon innovations in marketing as of now. Up till now we have tried to analyze as far as marketing mix goes or elements of marketing go. We have tried to analyze the perspective of product and product related elements with reference to innovation and we have uh, saw the concentric value of that perspective as well. Then we went to pricing and then we correlated pricing and product with other piece as well, but primarily pricing and product and then we saw pricing with a concentric value. Then we went for distribution and now we are carrying forward with distribution up till last session we tried to build up the case around the logic for innovation in distribution and then how to manage the distribution channels with innovative perspective. Therein we used examples like Rivigo and Federal Express and several elements of channel management and we tried to see that what can be done within that framework. Now we would be moving ahead in terms of retailing the last portion in terms of whole of the distribution channel chain goes the last touch point, but the most important touch point because it is associated with customers direct touch with customers whichever way you want to look at it retailing is the most important element and this whole of this world is touched upon by retailers everywhere you are on Amazon that is a retailer who is touching you you are going to a shop around you the retail touches you retail is everywhere and primarily many a times we look at marketing with the retailing perspective that is the importance of retailing. Retailing has several kinds of principles and there are several important books and subjects which have been talked about in terms of retailing levy and weeds they have contributed large in terms of as far as retailing goes it is a wonderful book written and, uh, and then most of uh, the B schools they use that it is a good kind of a reference. Then there are lots of papers which have been written on retailing in, uh, in terms of in store retailing and you know uh, online retailing and so on and retailing has lots of diversification which we have seen in due course of time. There is a direct marketing perspective which is talked about in terms of retailing and Eureka Forbes kind of examples are there and Amway kinds of examples are there and we would be touching upon that right now. So that is the importance of retailing and next uh, session I would be coming uh, towards the concentricity of uh, distribution and distribution channels and channel management with reference to other piece of marketing which we have seen other than promotion which I would be touching in the, in the next segment. So let us systematically try to build up the case. Retailing is a set of business activities carried on to accomplish the exchange of goods and services for purposes of personal, family or household use, whether performed in a store or by some form of non-store retailing. What retailing is we try, we, we understand and then you may understand more while deliberating upon this definition. I would not much uh, elaborate upon this as of now. but look at these two elements performed in store or by some form of non-store selling. Just keep these in mind. Last time when I was talking to you I was talking uh, with reference to reach, reach of the products or the organization, organizations, desire for reach and requirement for reach and then we progressed into reach in time before anyone could do that. And that is where the reach materializes in terms of retail and that happens you know in store and non-store and this is the larger level of our understanding in terms of the scope for innovation in retailing, how to create a scope for innovation. So that scope can be created while we maneuver between store and non-store we connect store and non-store or within store and within non-store. So these are three four conditions which one can think of when we are talking about innovation in retailing. These conditions definitely are enabled by our channel management and innovation in channel management and definitely in terms of the product improvisation or elements of product which we improve upon or innovate upon and definitely in terms of pricing as well. So product price and you know place comes into being together and that we visualize when we look at 
detailing. Last time I mentioned about that how the complete value chain gets instigated in terms of when products are sold at one part of time and that is how we sort of manage inventory which definitely affects our channel management systems and so on which is an important aspect. And if you will look at retailing this is the point where everything starts backwards and whole of the value chain gets instigated in a proper manner. So, remember these two three elements within store, within non store, between store and non store and so on. Scope of innovation lies within these kind of terms which we are using. And retailing includes again uh, I am referring, uh, referring to you know uh, earlier we referred to American Marketing Association uh, uh, the definitional sphere or dictionary lexicon which we you know common language marketing dictionary which is uh, a repository of the terms. And here uh, we are referring to Kotler, Keller, Ang and Tang, uh, Tan and Leong uh, marketing management Asian perspective. And this says that retailing includes all the activities in selling goods or services directly to final consumers for personal non-business use. Again a definitional framework which we talked about the, uh, in, the, in the earlier slide. A retailer or retail store is any business enterprise whose sales volume comes primarily from retailing, fine. Any organization selling to final consumers whether it is manufacturer, wholesaler or retailer. Now who can be the retailer? So this. Uh, retailer can be you know manufacturer, wholesaler or retailer themselves is doing retailing. It does not matter how the goods or services are sold in person by mail, by telephone, by vending machine or online or where in store on the street or in the consumers homes. You see this is what I was referring to that we have a scope for innovation in every sphere in terms of touching the customer goes how to best touch upon the customer that is the perspective. But when we are talking of this keep remembering micro segments and targets because that is the perspective which we one, uh, one should remember even if we would have talked about segmentation at large. Then also retailing means reaching to one touch point more or less. And that is the most important element of retailing which we should remember. And now we have started talking about micro segments and uh, you know targets with, with as far as with reference to our discussions which we have done. So here it is very important for us to remember this how to innovatively touch upon the micro segments or individual targets. Now once we are talking about these kind of things let us imagine what can be done. Now you see it is very very interesting. For example, when we talk of retailing, it and, and especially in store retailing and, and online I will talk about that as well, but in store retailing. So, we are actually referring to space. Now, if this space is smaller, then the innovation lies within the placement of the products with reference to the utility of the products or the movement of the goods and the changes which we may have faced uh, you know in, in recent past or if we have that kind of a longitudinal analysis the changes which we may have faced in terms of customer preferences. So you see the most important element is space placing the goods rightly at the right point in terms of display, in terms of utility, in terms of movement. And here goes the whole story. You have a 10 square feet space, you are in a very crowded market where lots of customers are coming, there are few regulars and lot many new customers and they are asking for a particular kinds of goods from uh, your shop because you have that kind of a specific inventory which everyone knows that they, they would find such kind of goods from here and that is how the story starts. So, according to the movement you have to bring in inventory. So, somewhere you are keeping inventory or some stockist is doing that and we have talked about you know distribution channels here. Now, if you have somehow larger space and still you are in a crowded market then you have a scope for differentiation in terms of product displays and even, even keeping inventory within the retail as well on display 
and that might attract and then there you are going for as far as you know the larger entrants and those kind of things. I have not yet started talking about innovation. I am talking about natural progression in terms of space management as of now because I want to emphasize upon you that retailing largely starts with a thought process of square feet utilization and customer attraction associated with, with the space which you have available with you and that is a very important kind of a thing. Now imagine slightly more space with you, imagine a huge departmental store where hundreds of goods are there and people have lot of scope for maneuvering within the alleys of as far as the departmental store goes. You, you are spending time having shopping carts with you and your children are also playing with you or our elders they are, you know, they are enjoying the site and they are, they are sitting for a while somewhere and then you are still buying those kind of things and people are spending time on different kinds of sections and so on. Imagine that kind of a world. If you will look into Spencer's they have more or less two or three kinds of departmental stores, hypermarkets or you know normal shops and those kind of they already have tried and analyzed this kind of a space management. Big bazaars they have different kinds of a larger space in sections you know in floors basically and one floor belongs to this section, the other floor belongs to that section and so on. Again it is a space management kind of a thing, Walmart they, they have been historically known for going outside the city and occupying a very 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 large space wherein you have different kinds of entrances from uh, you know different sides and you know that which road to take to go to which parking to enter into which gate for which kind of a purchase. That is the kind of you know analysis you have done because you are a regular customer there is Walmart they are, they are known for that and so on if people explore. So, they keep on exploring for couple of months or weeks to analyze that kind of a thing this basically. But the point here is it is a beautiful world of utilizing whatever space you have available with you. Same happens in virtual space whatever memory capacity, whatever speed in terms of your website management, whatever software and uh, you know backup support you have in terms of as far as attracting customers and taking them and giving them the cues and bringing them on this board and uh, on, on board in terms of this kind of a product, what kind of AI support you have that is how you manage that kind of a virtual space. Amazon does that, Amazon uh, you know might be wondering some, some, sometimes and people say that they, they have started uh, you know looking at it with that kind of a perspective that are they a software management company or actually a retail company or they are mix of both and whatsoever these kind of retailers they have everything in store for them. So, largely as of now keep this in mind you know as far as the maximization of space utilization goes you see we are trying to build up a beautiful story here and I would be going to that systematically, but I am trying to build up a case in front of you that if we are going for in store or in virtual space management is where to start with innovation. Once we are thinking in terms of space management the most important thing we have to analyze and we have talked about it earlier as well consumer behavior or shopping behavior you may say largely shopping behavior of the customer. So, I would start calling it shopping behavior for the convenience of the listeners here. This might not be a standard term which we may be using in text, this might have been referred by some papers somewhere you would find this term, but as of now just to look at this with a convenience perspective. So, shopping behavior. Now, once you enter to this departmental store you know you have been watched by several kinds of cameras you have been analyzed with reference to what different kinds of RFIDs and different kinds of gadgets which are being put there. Your mobile is a very big support in terms of analyzing your behavior because that has that has a continuous you know interaction with as far as your shopping environment goes, your preferences are there, your prompts are there, your advertisements are there and all of this you know is supporting AI based analysis which is being done in terms of individual customers and their behavioral patterns that can be utilized for on store and in store you know uh, virtual uh, both ways basically. When you have the profile of a customer in front of you then either you may use that profile to visualize similar kinds of shopping behaviors in terms of several kinds of customers. For example, you say that okay, if this age group or mothers who are free generally by 
mid noon and afternoons and their kids have come from school and their kids are not willing to sleep and rest at home the mothers they carry them in on, on week weekdays uh, they don't like to carry kids along to the shopping setup because somehow next day school you know would be suffering because of they won't, won't be able to do homework this kind of visualization there but then uh, your consumer behavior says that weekends would be too crowded and mothers would be perplexed with the kids when they come to the store so you have announced uh, you know a kind of uh, a sale on mid week wednesday sales we have mentioned that briefly as well so wednesday sales one side is attracting the mother and the coupon associated with that is attracting the mother on the other side some confusion in terms of you know her kids is there but then she decides that okay uh, you know if somehow i can manage it within one and a half hours basically and kids are not willing to sleep so she carries the kids along in terms of as far as the shopping store goes now your ai and analysis says that these kind of mothers when they come in they want their kids to be busy on store while they shop plus they want few things which kids may also pick up so as soon as you enter you might find a kids section on the right side books and staples and those kind of things a women section on the left side and the kids section uh, adjacent to women section that is the place where mothers and children they play uh, they spend a lot of time because uh, children would not be interested in purchasing rice and dal and atta and so on so and at the end of the register and this is a very quick view and at the end of where the registers are there so there are some chocolates and those kind of things and refrigerated goods are there kids would be attracted and that kind of a quick shopping by kids may add let's say 500 rupees to the spending of mother which which she is not expecting although she is forcing that some kind of a disturbance would be there but she is not expecting she is shouting at the kids at this particular kind of moment that please do not do that and then that the kid is willing to uh, not uh, negotiate because they know that this is a this is a place where negotiation cannot be managed by the mother because you know the register is crowded and she wants to go through and at that moment if you say that I do not want to leave without this kind of a chocolate and mother has to accept this offer however dangerous it is after when you cross the register because the mother definitely you know I would not say burst with anger mothers are very sweet by nature but definitely you know they would not take it very sportingly because they have been blackmailed at that kind of a particular point. So you see that this kind of a behavior has been taught by AI in terms of as far as whole lot of the configuration which we have gone through. So and that is how departmental stores and shopping malls uh, are placed largely that is how you know placement of goods that is how uh, you know you keep up the things that is how you uh, look at points of purchases that is how you look at uh, segments which you create when you walk from this gate to that gate. If we are imagining a huge shopping mall other than departmental store look at the kind of imagination which people would have done in creating for example a shopping mall of 15,000 hectares wherein you have 12 cinemas you have you know food joints you have a food court having almost 200 300 shops in circle and in the middle you know thousands or, or at least hundreds of people are sitting and eating food and uh, the dishes are being collected on skates through you know and on roller skates uh, you know putting the carts and trolleys around basically and then all the dishes are going to you know dish washing segment and, and uh, then all those dishes are then when, when washed and cleaned well they are distributed to different kinds of shops on the basis of the logos they carry and so on and somehow customers knows that what they would uh, want uh, would find as far as this segment goes and that segment goes and in India we, uh, we are not so um, uh, you know these sites are not so common wherein you have have huge food courts but definitely this is a site which we have in several shopping uh, setups around the world. Then you have several kinds of you know uh, other elements which we have to uh, foresee you have ATMs you have bookstores and uh, then, then you have clippings going on in as far as the screens go and cinema this is I am talking of huge shopping malls again it is space management but whenever we talk of space management and as we are talking of consumer and shopping behavior then the other element is inventory management. Now the scope for innovation is getting developed continuously and that is my point here. I am trying to build up a story around you know space, virtual and physical, then behavioral perspective of consumers you know in terms of virtual as well as physical definitely supported by lots of AI earlier it was a record based kind of or uh, you know uh, 
observation based kind of an analysis or general segmentation observation based analysis wherein lots of questionnaires were being filled and lots of people were devoting lots of time on analyzing the shopping behavior of people and so on. Because that would add one extra mile of spending or, or you know few rupees in terms of spending by consumer and that would add a cumulative profit which is good which is high as far as the retailer goes. That is the point where retailers they start adding on their own products as well or their own labels as you say. So, that comes in as far as the inventory management system goes, introduction of brand goes, brand value goes, we talked about pull and push as well last time that is where it comes as far as the whole scenario goes. So, you see inventory comes into play and when inventory comes into play when uh, you know shopping behavior comes into play when brand and non brand perspective you see when when uh, this uh, for example retailer they retailers they have their own labels or let us say as far as internationally known brand brands are there other brands are there which products customers would like to buy their labels and why and where customers would not compromise on brands and why that is an important perspective which retailers would keep on pushing and, and somehow and you see I started from small place, but small place lot of things they keep on going in the minds of the retailer. Larger the space then behavioral perspective keeps on adding and inventory management becomes more important as far as the situation goes because you now and then cannot change the display scenario as far as the whole uh, situation goes. And then last point which I want to add as far as a factor in terms of where innovation is required and I would be coming to a systematic description of how and uh, you know innovation is actually being done. So, last point which I want to add here is that uh, at the end of the day you have to look into you know what kind of a circulation of goods when we are talking of inventory management what kind of as far as you know wheel perspective what is the uh, what is the movement of goods that means which are highly sold goods which inventory should be low which inventory should be high in today's era when the information moves from the retail point to uh, manufacturers point and in today's era as we discussed last time also in especially in b2b now it is very common in b2c that uh, the inventory management circulates amongst the retailers of the manufacturer so, if someone has extra and someone requires extra this extra moves from this point to that point at some premium to this this retailer. So, that uh, start that has started having uh, you know uh, uh, taking place at large, but still there is a wheel effect. So, in wheel effect we must understand that again there is a perspective of that retailer wants to shelve off the goods which are not so much required. But if those goods are responsible for retaining the customers then you have to compromise as far as putting up a space ultimately it is space management. So, that kind of a perspective is also added to this kind of a discussion when we are moving into this space of retail innovation and having looked at these broader factors 4 or 5 factors if we wish to imagine that what kind of innovation is being done there is there is you know beautiful elements before that let us move into a brief you know because you are well aware of this a brief element of types of retailers. So, store retailers, non store retailers and retail organizations at large which are you know working in this kind of a space and when I am talking of you know retail organizations I am talking of automotive sales as well wherein uh, you know very very large organizations which sell different kinds of automotives from a single kind of a place and uh, that is very interesting you see you find n number of automotives at one place and when you are moving around as far as you know for example nowadays in shopping malls in large shopping malls also when you are moving around you you realize that several cars are on display. So, for, for that kind of a perspective is also there. So, uh, you know these types of retailers you know one must understand that this can be regardless of products. It is not very common site in India when you have multi automotive retailers, but there are several kinds of countries wherein you just move around and you would realize that it is a small city sort of a place wherein you know 
different kinds of automotives are being sold all together. In today's virtual world when you are mentally prepared and you know the specifications of cars, but these kind of products are that you want to sit in there and you want to try at least once. However, whatever is, is supported by in terms of you know uh, on site or off site test driving or you know book your test drive and whatever, you want to go to that place and want to have a feel there then come out and go for a test drive. This is a general consumer behavior or, or uh, customer behavior perspective which we have in mind. So, once we are talking of as far as you know this, this uh, types of retail perspective, I want that you should be adding almost the all types of products when we are talking of types of retailers and try and imagine that what difference does it make makes when we are talking of the types of products with, with reference to types of retailers. Uh, for example, if you would have moved around uh, a place wherein you know uh, curtains and uh, you know the, these kind of products are being sold. So, displaying the cloths and you know letting you imagine that what curtain you know uh, how it would look like on your window. If you will try it virtually that can give you a picture basically, but again you would appreciate that having a complete view you must be there in terms of clothes related to apparels for example. You can very well imagine how a shirt would look at you, how a, uh, you know how a suit would look at you, how a sari would look at you, but then definitely you want that thing to be physically imagined over there. So, is there any combination between in store and uh, you know uh, so, sort of virtual searching and uh, on store or physical purchasing? Can we look at this with the perspective of this is no more an innovation uh, as of now, it would have been an innovation few years back, but can we look at it with the perspective of being more innovative within this kind of a space? We can be and I would be coming back to you with lots of analysis in terms of as far as expanding our discussion on store retailers and then you know uh, non-store retailers and retail organizations and taking you towards the innovative elements or specific examples which would elaborate upon how this thing is being done and then we will flare up our imagination practically looking at aspects of how things can be done in future. I will be catching up with you with lots of insights on retailing and retail based innovation in my next section till then. Goodbye.